Good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today we have another mini PC from Billing called the S1 and unlike the last mini PC that we had from them, this one comes with 8GB of RAM and this one can also take external hard drives and that's quite important. Now for specs we have the Intel N3450 CPU, this is a quad core CPU clocked at 1.1 GHz but it has turbo boost to up to 2.2 GHz. As I mentioned before we have 8GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. This comes pre-installed with Windows 10, the home edition, and this is also an activated copy of Windows. Now, that means that you're going to be able to get updates, and I actually had a whole bunch of updates that I had to do as soon as I um, turned this on. And you also have access to the Windows Store, so you can download apps, games, or anything from there. If you've seen any other computer running Windows 10, well, this is exactly like that and there is no difference. We also have access to Cortana, that voice assistant for Windows, and the mini PC also has a built-in microphone, so you don't have to install a microphone if you want to use that assistant. Keep in mind that that microphone is not that sensitive, so you're going to have to talk a bit louder than normal for the microphone to pick up whatever you're saying. For pricing, this costs around $210, but that's quite normal for any mini PC that has 8 gigs of RAM. Why don't we start with a very quick unboxing? So this comes in a good looking box. The box is a bit larger than most box that we've seen for um, billing mini PCs. On the top we see the model name and on one side we can find the specifications and what's in the box. So inside the box we are going to find the mini PC itself, obviously we are going to find um, two user manuals, the user manuals are in English but they don't have that much information, we also have two HDMI cables, one of them it's very short, the other one it's a bit longer, we have the power adapter and two metallic plates. Those metallic plates can be used to attach this mini PC to the back of a TV or a monitor, so it really depends on your setup. And moving on to the mini PC, so this one it's a bit larger than most other mini PCs that we've seen, but only because it uh, can take an external hard drive, so it needs the space for that. The mini PC itself it's made out of plastic pretty much everywhere, but it doesn't feel cheap. You can access that hard drive bay by removing two screws on the back of the box and removing that plastic door and then you can just install uh, your hard drive. Now I went uh, further and I removed all the screws, uh, so I removed those legs from the bottom of the mini PC and then I removed those screws just because I wanted to see what's inside it. So there is no fan inside this mini PC, we just have a big heat sink and we've seen this for previous uh, billing devices and you cannot upgrade the RAM either, so you're going to be stuck with the 8 gigs of RAM that comes with this device. So on the exterior of the mini PC we have the power button, we have a little LED there that flashes um, depending on what the mini PC is doing, we have a slot for an SD card, two USB 3 ports and a USB-C port. On the back you're gonna find a 3.5mm audio jack so you can attach some headphones or some speakers, we have two USB ports, the network adapter port, the HDMI out, we also have a VGA out, the port for the power adapter and lastly where you could lock the mini PC. And of course on the sides we have some holes so the mini PC doesn't overheat but it does get quite hot whenever you're playing games so keep that in mind. And what would this video be without some benchmark results? So first of all I ran Cinebench on it and as you can probably tell for yourself the scores aren't that high but let's keep in mind the price of the mini PC and the processor that we have inside. Next I had Passmark going and actually the score that I got for Passmark was higher than most other mini PCs that I tried with the Intel N3450. So I was quite um, happy by that and that's probably due because of that extra RAM that we have because most other mini PCs that I tried have 4 gigs of RAM. And aside from that I had the Geekbench um, for um, running on it and the scores are appropriate and pretty much the same as we've seen for previous mini PCs with the same processor. For performance, even though we don't have a powerhouse, I found that this mini PC works better than the last mini PC from Billing, so that M1 that we had, so the software is much better optimized for this one, and of course that 8 gigs of RAM definitely helps with that as well. If you use the browser that comes pre-installed with Windows, you can watch YouTube videos at the maximum resolution, which is uh, 4K, and all the videos seem to go very, very smooth. Now, this is not the case if you use Chrome. So if you're using Chrome, um, all the videos seem to lag um, beyond the 1080p resolution. So I do recommend that you use the built-in browser for watching YouTube videos. So overall, no problems with the YouTube videos um, from this uh, mini PC. I was also able to watch Netflix in the browser as well, but um, since you have access to that um, Windows Store, you could definitely install the Netflix um, app and uh, that could be much easier to navigate, but Netflix works very good as well without any issues.
If you're planning to use Kodi, so basically use this as a media center um, and I used Kodi 17.4 I believe and that was the one that I downloaded from um, the Windows Store, everything seemed to go very good as well um, with that. Now keep in mind that I haven't actually used the mini PC connected to the internet through a wire so everything that I was doing was um, over the Wi-Fi. I've also opened a couple of add-ons uh, with Kodi and as you can probably tell for yourself they do work quite good and they actually start very quickly and I wasn't expecting that it would work uh, that well over Wi-Fi. And since we are talking about Wi-Fi, this has dual band Wi-Fi as well. Now it would be much better to connect this through a wire, but if you don't have that possibility, you can still use it very well over the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band. Now the 5 GHz band doesn't seem to get the best uh, signal, but I was kind of far away from the router. I've also checked the speeds for the internal storage for this mini PC because if you remember the last one, the Billing M1 had kind of low speeds um, for the internal storage. So out of that 64 gigs that comes with the device, we have about 30 gigs left. Keep in mind, I had a whole bunch um, of stuff installed on the mini PC at this point. Now, the speeds that I got for the internal storage aren't the fastest that I've seen and I've definitely seen other mini PCs in the past with faster um, internal storage. And you're definitely gonna feel that mostly if you're trying to copy a file from like an SSD to um, the internal storage. So yeah, it's not that fast. Since most people are gonna use this as a media center, of course, it's important to see how well it does for video files. So I plugged in my USB stick that has a whole bunch of um, video files on it and I'm gonna let you guys watch and see how well they did. So as you've seen, every single video file that I played on this uh, mini PC worked very, very well and I was quite impressed because uh, if you remember on the Billing M1, well, it wasn't uh, the same, so much better on this one. Gaming it's also possible on the S1, but keep in mind that this is not a gaming machine, so if you're expecting some crazy performance for gaming, well, you're gonna be disappointed. So most free games that you're gonna be able to download from uh, the Windows Store will work okay, but as soon as you have uh, some uh, graphics intensive games, well, they're not doing that good. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. The first one it's uh, Asphalt 8 and the second one it's a game that I found um, online. So you're gonna see that uh, the second game it's much, much slower.
So as you've seen the first game was alright but the second one was not the best so this is definitely not a gaming machine. So overall this was among the best mini PCs that I tried in the last 6-8 months and I was quite impressed that all the video files that I tried worked without um, any issue. So if you're planning to buy something like this, this is definitely worth its price. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.